name is Andre Tenesesco, and I work with the programming team here at the festival. But before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that, that tonight's event is taking place in the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. I'd like to remind you that this movie is eligible for the Gorge People's Choice Award, so if you like it, please don't forget to vote at tiff.net slash vote. And of course, we'd like to thank Heretic Outreach for providing us with this movie. The movie that you're about to see, Summer Survivors, is the second Lithuanian film that plays the festival in just as many years. Last year, we had Miracle that also world premiered at our festival. Uh, and before that, it took about 15 years prior to have a Lithuanian movie. With Miracle, and particularly with Summer Survivors, uh, we believe that we can definitely speak of a new generation of Lithuanian filmmakers um, to make themselves uh, present on the film festival scene. The film that you're about to see, Summer Survivors, marks the fiction debut, uh, directing debut of the director, Maria Kaftaradze. She had been uh, making short films since 2010. In 2016, she co The Saint, which was a huge festival hit. And with Summer Survivors, it's a film that is immediately, as soon as we watched it, we fell under its spell. It has its bittersweet charm, a unique visual style, and a very tender and protective approach to discussing mental health. We are really proud and happy to have the movie here as a world premiere. You're the second audience in the world to see it. And of course, to have Maria Kaftareza here with us. We'll, uh, we'll be having a Q&A session at the end of the screening. We highly encourage all of you to participate. But for now, please help me welcome Maria Kaftareza. Hello, thank you very much uh, for coming. and. Uh, I just want to say that I'm really happy that I can present uh, my film here. And uh, I really hope that you will stay after the film for Q&A and we'll have a conversation. So thank you. Please help me welcome back Maria Kaftaradze. <laughs> Take a breather after the film. Um, yeah. I I would like to start by, um, I'm not sure how many of you know, uh, Lithuania has the highest number of suicides in Europe. It is number eight, in fact, in the world uh, around there. It's a horrible st statistic. Um, I would like to start by asking uh, Maria, really, uh, what motivated you to m tell us Paul Jesus and Justa's story and Indra's and So first of all, uh, what uh, it's uh, what you're saying is true, and it's really, really sad that we have these statistics. And uh, I just uh, what motivated me the most is because I really feel it not just like you know a fact, like statistics, but it really. Uh, you feel it from your own experience, from uh, people around you, that this is really possible anytime, and that we need to talk about it, and that we need to talk about mental health, because it often people talk about suicides, but they don't talk about why it's happening. And of course, I'm, I'm not saying that all suicides are happening uh, because of mental issues. It's not true, yes, but I chose... Uh, to talk about uh, this kind of yeah. um, I will open the, the floor to questions right away if anybody has any uh, you want Yes, so uh, they sent him uh, to another hospital. He had to be admitted to another hospital that, as we saw, he just left. He had to stay here. And uh, because he couldn't, uh, 
the backstory that is maybe not uh, really clear, but uh, he used his days in that institution where he was staying in Vilnius in the capital. And he is uh, originally from that town that they're going. So the doctor is, uh, as you see, the doctor character is quite arrogant. <laughs> so he, you know, used his uh, connections, you know, to put him to that hospital. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if it's right <laughs> that they did it, but the, their logic, the character's logic was like that. Yes, yes. It's like that in the system. Uh, we'll go back there and then over here. Go ahead. Y yes, yeah. Uh, yes, it was very personal. <laughs> So thank you, first of all. And uh, maybe probably I just, uh, I wanted, you know, to talk about uh, treatment also and about hospitals, but I didn't want to stay only in one place. And I really wanted them to be in one space close that they could <laughs> get really close, what I think and that happens in the film. So... Yeah, that's why I wrote, and also another reason, which is more simple, that I love road moves myself. <laughs> There's actually something very, very special about um, the intimacy that the characters have between themselves. Um, I think it's worth saying how many days uh, it took to film the whole film. <laughs> if you can talk about that. Yes, yeah, so we shot the film in 18 days. <laughs> 18 shooting days. <laughs> to create that amount of chemistry is, and, and uh, to somebody else, I, I forgot who, who brought up the, um, the discussion, there's something really beautiful about your visual approach to the movie, and also particularly to the way that you use sound. The visual approach, I would like to bring it to attention, uh, the nature that is portrayed in the movie. Um, and one of the most poignant moments for me was uh, when Polius is in his uh, kitchen, and there, and there's a bonsai tree, and the resilience of nature and the uh, the um, resurrection of nature, I think, um, has, plays a very very big role in the film. Um, and I was thinking maybe you could talk about that. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, first of all, I'm really happy that it can, if like it feels like that because we really wanted this feeling of. Uh, just feel nature because it's alive all the time. You can see green uh, uh, through the windows <laughs> when they are driving, when they're in, in the hospitals. And uh, 
I wanted to, to feel this beauty that because they, at moments, most of the time they cannot see it, but we can see it. But they are, uh, it's not like they're not looking or they're ignoring it, they just, they just can't. And there was, uh, oh, yes, go, we'll, we'll go back there and then we'll go front, go ahead. So, for me, this uh, first smile, especially at the end, is uh, like the person's strength because I I wanted uh, to that people would live with hope. I I, I wouldn't want to finish the film with in the kitchen with Polus. That smile gives me hope because you f you can feel, or I wanted that you could feel that uh, she. It's hard, it's not like she got better or she's pretending that she's better, but she tries to do something that maybe won't work. <laughs> and probably this fake smile, <laughs> maybe it doesn't help too many people, but maybe, like Paul said, there are 10 persons that can help. So yeah, probably that's why. Uh, for me, it's like a strength and the person's will to try. And um, yeah, probably that. I mean, it, it's also beautiful that she does that as she takes away the bandages, and she's 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 facing uh, her condition, and she's coming to terms with it. And yeah, clearly the smile will you know will just hopefully uh, help her to you know face it and confront it and move on. Um, any uh, yes, go ahead then. Well, this yeah, this is a question that uh, I would not like to answer. <laughs> this is can be both. Yes, go ahead. So maybe at first I can comment on the openness about the hospital. So the hospital that we see at first in Vilnius, uh, we shot it in the actual hospital. But uh, it's not like uh, all the hospital is so open that you can, you know, go and leave. There are different uh, buildings, you know, with the different uh, security policies. Uh, this one that I portrayed was a bit... Uh, I would say easier, not, not the hardest one, you know, not the one that is locked. You can go outside and uh, when you wish. But of course, there's also all the time staff that uh, watches you if you need something. And uh, the research, I, I, when I wrote the script, um, I wrote it from my own experience, so I knew most of the things. And then I also talked with the doctors uh, to check the system details, uh, like if they don't have psychiatrists and psychologists, uh, just checking if uh, 
don't, don't they think that something is like wrong from their side? Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you, and um, I don't know how to say or not. No, maybe you have a guess. Do you have some theories? Well, my my thought was, uh, but it wasn't like you know that you had to get it, but I, I just thought, thought that uh, his wife has problems and he wanted to consult with her because he is worried about his wife. There's another hand down here. No. Yes, go ahead. Yes, absolutely. That 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 what we thought, and that what we talked also with with actors. Mm, of course, I don't think that uh, research is bad, <laughs> and you know, working with patients is good. But uh, I do think that doctor wanted you know to throw her somewhere because he saw that she is uh, absolutely <laughs> not capable of you know communicating and helping people. So. And you know, also it's uh, even funny how she goes in the car with the people who are really close to, you know, who attempted suicide, and uh, she talks about how she wants to work with a machine <laughs> to check it, right? Not even talking with them. So, yeah, I think that was the doctor's plan. <laughs> so we have time for just two more questions. Anybody? I would also like to ask about the sound design. Uh, it might sound like a technical question, but I think the way that, that we experience the moments, uh, as somebody else mentioned here, uh, is very important to connecting you know, with the characters, but also with the atmosphere that, that really bounds uh, them together. Um, it feels very cloistered and claustrophobic, but in a very intimate setting. Um, do you want to maybe talk about that as well? Yeah, so um, we really wanted the, sa the sound to be uh, just with the, sa with the help of sound, we wanted to get uh, into the heads of characters and really feel the moods. And uh, yeah, we worked on that. And uh, there are, yeah, there were uh, some uh, things that we used that we were even a little bit scared with sound designer that oh maybe it would be too much but we really felt that we have to just go with our feelings because we really at first we just talked and uh, started working with the line of the not the line the like chart of the feelings of characters all three of them and uh, separately just to feel and the sound designer wanted to talk a lot well in general he really likes to talk a lot but uh, also about the film uh, just anything that could help him and it really felt that uh, all the time that we spent just talking it did later somehow we did use it in sound even when it seemed that we we're just talking about you know in general about the film and about the moods and stuff uh, yes go ahead last question All main actors, yeah, they are professionals. Uh, they all are, well, young, uh, but uh, 
all of them um, have acted before in films and in theater and yeah. In fact, Yuste and Indres acted in The Saint, which is the film that Maria uh, co-wrote. Um, I would like to end by, of course, thanking you, Maria, for the film. Um, I th one of the really poignant moments in the film is, for me, actually, when the, uh, the mechanic um, discovers that the van actually belongs to a, to a mental clinic. Most people's reactions would be to either push them away or to not necessarily get involved or apply certain prejudices towards them. And I think the beautiful narrative... Um, kind of curb that your film takes to that scene, and I think in particular to other scenes, is that it brings a very human uh, reaction, which is not to push them away, but to interact with them. And I thank you for that, and I hope that we can all kind of you know, take that away and you know, apply it in our own lives. So thank you very much for coming.